Hey everyone, this is Spencer, Oncology Pharmacy Resident, and today I'll be going over my project looking at the evaluation of immune-related adverse event management for patients receiving immune checkpoint inhibitors uh, at Monument Health. A bit of background about immune checkpoint inhibitors. Their use has become increasingly useful and prevalent in the treatment of both solid tumors and hematologic malignancies in recent years due to their mechanism of action, as well as their broad applicability. They have rapidly gained indications for numerous cancers and are now considered first-line options either as monotherapy or in combination with cytotoxic chemotherapy. We can see with their use that they do provide a great response. They continue to be studied in various settings, and we can expect their use to continue to grow over the years. They do provide great responses, but do come with unique adverse events, uh, those adverse events being immune-related adverse events, which means that the patient's own immune system starts to attack the body's own healthy tissues. Getting into immune-related adverse events, or IRAEs, so these events can significantly impact a patient's quality of life and may require delay in life-saving immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy. The reported incidence of IRAE ranges between the immune checkpoint inhibitors. So as we can see with ipilimumab, the first immune checkpoint inhibitor approved a CTLA-4 inhibitor. It has a rate of 70 to 80% of any grade IRAEs, while PD-1 and PDL one inhibitors have a rate of around 60 to 70%. The more serious toxicities do follow the same pattern with a greater incidence of grade three or four toxicities seen with ipilimumab at around 20 to 30%, and then 14 to 20 with PD-1 and PD-L1 inhibitors. IRAEs do require prompt recognition and treatment because they can escalate if left untreated. One unique point about IRAEs is that they can occur at any point in therapy and have been reported even up to a year after discontinuation. With increasing use of immune checkpoint inhibitors, the challenges associated with IRAEs cannot be ignored. Enhanced awareness is critical as prompt recognition and initiation of treatment have important clinical implications on treatment outcomes. So for this project, we wanted to see how immune-related adverse events were being handled within Monument Health's emergency department. So our primary objective was to determine the percentage of patients who received appropriate diagnosis as well as initiation of treatment within four hours of presenting to the emergency room. The secondary objectives were to determine the appropriateness of treatment of the IRAEs, review appropriateness of immunotherapy, so looking at the tumor type and stage as well as the place and therapy of the immune checkpoint inhibitor, as well as any diagnostic markers, so looking at PDL1 testing. And lastly, to evaluate adjustments to immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy after an IRAE, looking to see if the patient was rechallenged with their immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy and what the outcome was. This was a retrospective chart review looking at patients greater than the 18 years of age who were receiving treatment with immune checkpoint inhibitor or previously had received an immune checkpoint inhibitor. This was a retrospective chart review looking at adult patients greater than 18 years of age who were receiving treatment with an immune checkpoint inhibitor or previously received an immune checkpoint inhibitor within one year of August 1st, 2018 and presented to the emergency department with an IRAE between August 1st, 2018 and July 31st, 2019. The initial data poll yielded 156 patients who were treated uh, with an immune checkpoint inhibitor in this time frame. As you can see, the breakdown 86 received pembrolizumab, 37 nivolumab, 19 atezolizumab, 7 drivolumab, and 7 in the combination nivolumab and ipilimumab. Of the 156 patients identified, there were 7 events. So looking at the patient characteristics of these 7 patients, we can see there was a mean age around 72 years old with the majority of patients being male, mean weight of 97 kilograms, and the most common cancer diagnosis uh, being non-small cell lung cancer, and then followed by small cell lung cancer and renal cell carcinoma. The mean amount of immune checkpoint inhibitor doses received was 5.3 and the mean onset in days, so how many days after the last immune checkpoint inhibitor dose they presented to the emergency department uh, was around 15. Next we have a breakdown of the initial IRAE presentation grade. So as you can see the majority of patients did present with a grade 2 event with one patient presenting with a grade three event. Next, we can see the IRAEs by breakdown of immune checkpoint inhibitors. So pembrolizumab um, resulting in the most immune-related adverse events of four of the seven, followed by atezolizumab, drivolumab, in combination nivolumab and ipilimumab with one each. The most common IRAE observed was pneumonitis, four of the seven patients, and then colitis, encephalitis, and hepatitis with one event each.
Looking at the outcomes of the percentage of patients who were diagnosed and treatment was initiated within four hours of presentation to the ED, six of the seven patients were both diagnosed and had treatment initiated within four hours of presentation to the ED. The appropriateness of the treatment initiated for IRAEs was determined using guidelines such as ASCO, NCCN, and ESMO, really relying on the cornerstone of corticosteroids. Of the seven IRAE events, Four patients were started on the correct dose of corticosteroids with the correct frequency, whereas three of the seven were not started on the correct therapy. One patient was started on a supertherapeutic dose, one patient was started on a subtherapeutic dose, and one patient was not started on corticosteroids until two days after presentation to the emergency department. Getting into if the immunotherapy was appropriate, uh, so based on documentation as well as place in therapy, all seven patients' immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy was deemed appropriate. Lastly, three of the seven patients had their immune checkpoint inhibitor discontinued after the initial IRAE. Three of the patients were able to be rechallenged with their immune checkpoint inhibitor without any further IRAE in the specified time range. And then one patient was rechallenged with their immune checkpoint inhibitor but did have an IRAE exacerbation and treatment was stopped. Looking at the results of this project, the rates of IRAEs in this study did differ compared to published rates of IRAEs, which could be due to this being a retrospective chart review, uh, which relies on thorough documentation. The median doses received reflects the previously reported data. Uh, The majority of patients were lung cancer patients. The one patient who did present with an initial grade 3 RAE was an immune-related encephalitis, which ultimately progressed to a grade 5 event. Patients were able to be rechallenged with their immune checkpoint inhibitor with success. Emergency department providers were able to recognize and initiate treatment in a time-efficient manner but three patients' initial treatment did fall outside of guideline recommendations. Some limitations to this project being it was retrospective review with a small sample size, which could have included subjective reporting or lack of reporting, and two other potential explanations of the lower rate of IREEs observed in this study could be due to that Patients were not further reviewed for diagnosis of IRAE if hospitalized without an initial diagnosis of an IRAE, and this study did not take into account uh, direct admits or clinic-managed IRAE patients. From this project, we were able to take away that there is opportunity for further provider education as well as opportunity for pharmacist involvement and interventions. We also discussed Uh, development of an easier consult system, and lastly, I reviewed the pocket card which is given to patients receiving immune checkpoint inhibitors that provides education on IRAEs and what to do if one does present. I want to thank you for your time, and as always, if there are any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to me at slehman1, S-L-E-H-M-A-N-N-1, at monument.health.